Hello, um, how are you? This is um, a lesson into um, of how we communicate. Um, we're communicating with a stage, with a public place, with ancient stories, contemporary stories. And as a big McLuhanite, Marshall McLuhan, I uh, mentioned this before, I think I subscribe to the rear view mirror theory that every new-ish medium, newer medium, due to technological advances, um, embodies um, older media. Um, uh, 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 certainly, uh, theater is one of the older, oldest media. Certainly, maybe the campfire, the sh shaman, the, um, uh, the bard, the oral storyteller, the Homeric storyteller, um, the the uh, Old Testament, all the stories there are selected through um, many hundreds of years. Um, uh, but we're, we're jump cutting all the way up to this new world of the screen. I'm delivering this class asynchronistically. I don't know if you're paying attention. Um, um, I care a lot that you are. That's why I'm showing my face. So you have this this um, mirror neuron connection with your interlocutor, which is me. Um, but let's talk about uh, uh, the recent thing, which all this hypey language and so forth has been added to um, UX, user experience, uh, UI, user interface, um, uh, MR, mixed reality, uh, uh, the megaverse, uh, the metaverse, um, which is, you know, these new hypey umbrella terms for what we're doing are extremely popular. Um, are out there, maybe you've heard of them. How, how is, was, were, when, was theater a kind of an interface? Um, during the Greeks, it was an important interface. It allowed them to have discussion, but it also allowed them to be controlled by the powers that be, much the way that, as you saw in the movie, the docu-fiction movie, um, uh, uh, The Social Dilemma, you saw how al charting algorithms allowed um, AI to, in a sense, help these mega corporations like Apple and face uh, Facebook and Instagram, Facebook. Um, TikTok uh, to chart you, Amazon to chart your consumer habits, all in the name of efficiency, much like what happened with agriculture at the beginning with the internal combustion engine. Um, war and agriculture took on the internal combustion engine with a vengeance. Um, uh, the train made the American Civil War possible. They could get a lot of troops to points there's a guessing game where the next body of troops would show up um, but they had a railroad network to get them there um, world war ii the famous deuce and a half by um, chrysler was supplied on the american side and on the americans sent these off to russia so the the deuce and a half the two and a half ton chrysler truck got troops there um, what do we deliver now? Uh, during COVID, what was delivered in terms of information and even in terms of um, managerial work? No one's digging the ditches. Our heroic frontline um, service providers, the nurses, the transit people who had to run, all these people put themselves in harm's way. Um, uh, but uh, what was, how, how can we compare that to the advances of the internal combustion engine? Um, our agriculture was transformed, and you can actually chart it. One of my grandfathers uh, lost the farm in 29. He had a hardware store, knew how to weld, went to a factory um, welding submarines outside of Chicago, submarine engines. Um, so he worked on, he was displaced, by um, maybe the inter in internal combustion engine applied on a corporate scale, um, stock market crash of 29, and then replaced 
into an industrial sect sector factory where he's a perfect example of this, the, the agricultural transformation into it. Advance, the internal combustion engine, N um, 1990s, the largest industrial revolution in, the, f in the, the history of the world happened in China. Basically, um, the subsistence and mid-level agricultural areas were emptied out as young people moved to the factories on the coastal, on coastal China. So we saw this made possible by corporate farming, now a really low level, two or three percent of the population farms. Uh, most of it is corporate farming with internal combustion engines, inclusion of AI, uh, supply chains that are, uh, that are commanded by AI. Um, in the movie, uh, The Future of Work and Death, um, they talk about with irony how we assume technology will um, uh, advance things. And the technology of both the internal combust combustion engine and now uh, systems through AI and distributing food to markets has uh, uh, both entered a level of high efficiency in it's quoted that only 2,700 calories per day are needed by every man, woman, and child on planet Earth. We could distribute that. We have the agricultural capacity to get 2,700 um, calories to everyone on Earth, but um, this somehow we don't because of markets and politics, and um, AI is ready for that to distribute. Also. Um, as Rushkoff said, uh, are we deserved of the stuff that is out there? Is that psychology still embedded in us? So let's talk about this kind of de kind of delusional, um, the delusions of COVID that led us to shy away from public space, allow for the litigious nature of, of America to kick in that we are infecting each other with these COVID possibly. And so therefore we should just be pushing paper on a laptop. Big question, who's digging the ditches um, in society? Or is the AI digging ditches increasingly? This will put out one third to one half of all the jobs existing now. Um, kind of a delusional sleight of hand is like, oh, we should just be inside learning and pushing paper. And uh, fortunately, I'm a professor who deals with human beings, you, um, so I can for a living, but I'm intensely worried about infrastructure. Thusly, I'm a designer intensely worried about supply chains and complexity. The more complex a system, the more um, its ability to build in fragility. And this is what uh, Nassim Tlaib uh, talks about as black swans. Fly out of nowhere, like 911 and uh, COVID and a bunch of other things that are yet to come and radically change anything, everything. They were not predict. They are predicted, but because of the black swan nature of society, not wanting to look at uh, seeing complex, huge complex systems as robust, we think that these things are ironclad. Um, they are not. Um, so I'm interested in this, and I'm interested in um, interfaces, um, the Socratic dimension of interfaces. What it allows for a debate the way theater used to, especially small-ish theater, not the big Greek stages where admittedly a lot of the oligarchs of Athens wanted to shape public opinion for war. They needed soldiers. They didn't know at any time a black swan could fly out of anywhere. Sparta could get the upper hand on, on them. Another town could de uh, defect to Sparta. Um, the Persians could get um, uppity, you know, because they were the power, the admired power. And um, uh, in, in Aeschylus' age, a lot of these people actually fought in the Persian Wars, Socrates, Aeschylus, and they knew the value of um, contemplation, at least for the freemen. 
Women and slaves, they're another thing. Hoplites were the farmers out in the boonies and the uh, Spartans actually had a ritual um, a rite of passage, a game to which the young Spartan warriors would go out and kill a hoplite and come back with evidence, I don't know, an ear or whatever. Um, these, these sort of antagonisms, including slavery, built into this, uh, which was very iron, ironclad slavery, usually from um, uh, refugees or uh, prisoners or, you know, I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable on just what dimensions a slave were. I understand in Rome there were opportunities for the slaves to to buy their freedom, become um, a kind of white collar workers, accountants, bankers, things like that. Um, I'm not saying it's less benign because we did have blood sports to which uh, funeral games were uh, oligarchs, you know, making their slaves fight to the death and that became had that spectacle aspect to it. So talk about the UX of gladiatorial games. It had a definite, my point here, it has a definite function and, and three quarters of the function is actually buried underneath it like a pyramid. Three quarters of the function of gladiatorial games, the UX, which comes from having your own slaves fight to death. Um, which is hinted to in Django Unchained with the with the Man, Mandingo games or uh, 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 kind of boxing to the death that um, that the owners would put up, I guess, which was true. Um, that comes from the blood sports, the attendant spectacle comes from mentioned in the movies of, of a French thinker filmmaker. Um, uh, uh, person I admire, Guy Debord, talking about the actual what is made in spectacle, what is the slipperiness of spectacle, and how does that reify, change, uh, transform capital, transform potlatch, which is creative destruction. That's all war is. It seems complex. I want to be ahead of the cur curve, like Talib says and actually point out these black swans. The black swan of bailing everyone out with extra printed money two years ago is led to rampant inflation. Fortunately, housing prices are coming down, interest rates are going up, but make no mistake, the new forms of profit will only come from extracting capital from uh, public space, public minds too. Um, your public mind, as the movie uh, The Social Dilemma pulled up, is fertile soil for, um, for personages, for oligarchs. Um, and so that's part of the function of, of education, to deal with, disseminate new ideas, but also increase um, substantive debates that lead to productivity, a civil behavior between the debators and the interlocutor, interlocutors, um, and so forth. So let's talk about UX, UI, in a McLuhan-esque way, it's saying the, the content is the little piece of meat the burglar carries just to distract the guard dogs. Um, meanwhile, the burglar does all it has to do to burgle the, the, the household while the conscious critical mind hangs out, eats the meat. And we see this over again. We see this in an inability to debate. We see this in entrenched um, opinions. We see this in the narcissism of the small complaints, essentially people on similar political spectrums arguing over tiny things. Meanwhile, the burglar takes the rest. Um, we see that in uh, uh, assumptions of, you know, is where is your mindset? What are your belief systems? And in general, increase of ad hominem to the person um, argumentation, which is fallacious. Um, let's go on. Human elements, stakeholders, SMEs, um, developer, engineers, designers, me. Um, designers staunchly between art and technology. Um, that's part of the teaching of this class. Um, user experience st strategies. What, what is ancient psychology? What is pre-ancient psychology in the form of, of um, 
evolutionary psychology, dirty word nowadays in academia, but it should be explored. It should not, as a model, as a model, not as, as uh, uh, verifi verifiable truths. Um, we need models, we need tropes, we need shifting um, uh, uh, modalities, we need that, which implies debate and agency out of that. Um, informational elements, existing data user inter interviews, competing products, receive, uh, research, consumer feedback. What's going on? Can they get that in a click of a button? Or as one of the larger rubrics of, uh, or the larger principles, rhetoric, hopefully rhetoric around this, is if Singularity is near, as Kurzweil says, and you know, it might be. This is a different type of intelligence. Just the way in the, the, the book, uh, The Spiritual Lives of Trees, the German forester came up with that trees are living entities and think in a different way. Um, I don't know how much scientific background, but it's an interesting trope. Um, the violinist putting the brains in the fingertips. Um, where, where does your brain begin and stop? So um, AI is not embodied. It starts from a disembodied place. We are embodied. Every time we go back to the body, um, sometimes good things happen, often good things, uh, namely empathy, pleasure, Epicureanism, delight. Um, uh, we return back to the level, just again, like the violinist putting the putting their brains in their fingertips to play. Um, ask any musician. And that's partially what I want to impress upon you to get you back into drawing, is to embody, because we are set with um, this division between stories told by AI, the story of you told by AI through surveillance capitalism, and your own story which comes out of your embodiment. Outcomes, design criteria, functionality, features, successful metrics. Keep thinking of the Greek stage, Aeschylus's um, Oresti, which I'm seeing next week. Keep thinking of Roman blood sports, um, uh, a bunch of pygmies running, pygmy gladiators running around, um, midg midgets or whatever, I heard this is true, um, attacking uh, tall women dressed up as Amazons um, and watching them hack each other to death, releasing um, on the, the opening of the Colosseum, was it Vespasian? It wasn't Nero, they built it on Nero's uh, palace site, the Colosseum, there was a Colossus, therefore, of Nero, hence the name. Uh, Vespasian, I think. Anyway, there's something like 10,000 animals killed, uh, wild animals from Africa. This was, this was, there was a purpose for this, other than blank, um, uh, uh, content. Uh, the purpose is to control a population. They used to throw bread up to the unemployed. At one time, three quarters of Rome was um, unemployed foreigners. Oops, um, combustible mix. And it was a combustible, combustible mix. There were riots at time. Um, uh, they were masters at engineering and getting, uh, basically plumbing made that city the ability to plumb, to get fresh water in and sewage out was the reason Rome got to be over a million people way back in ancient society. But brilliant engineers, um, kind of hacks in, in most everything else because of this propensity toward, um, I don't know, propensity toward um, not looking at their black swans um, and so forth. Let's go on. Um, uh, these are uh, basic ideas of composing on the golden section of Pythagoras, Le Corbusier, the architect, the planner of big, huge slab type buildings, was um, uh, obsessed with Pythagoras. At least my big, you know, brutalist slabs are well proportioned. Um, excuse me, we have that aspects of UI in our works, user interface, user experience. Can we resonate with these ancient things such as Pythagorean 
golden sections. And Pythagoras could have been a committee, could have been a, a Greek living in Egypt, could have been a mystic. I mean, there's all sorts of things surrounding the historical figure of Pythagoras, which is kind of fun. Did he settle in Syracuse, Sicily? Um, um, did these ideas come from the East? It's uh, pretty much this esoteric thing that combined with mathematics, combined with um, kind of a desire to make systems building in the form of religions and so forth. Here is your composition in UI. Here are some of your screens in kiosks. Kiosks, kind of way old school. I you saw this in San Francisco in airport way back in mid 80s. Yeah, I'm that old. Um, and I thought, wow, that's bizarre. And they were all touch screens and then later this shows up, I, I can't even, me, um, professor, must, I must have at least in my possession 10, 20 screens. I don't, I don't know, I don't throw them away, but I, is it embarrassing? I don't know, I, it's my profession, but uh, do I make use of them all? No, I make use of this one, and occasionally an iPad, and my cell phone, so three. Um, uh, the dimension to which we can use these open freely, I'm a, of the hacker generation, um, uh, the early part of Gen X, I guess, um, which is like, hey, let's play around with this stuff. Let's make it do what it's not supposed to do. It's being shut down by Apple Corp um, into their little straight jacketed UI UX. I have taught UI UX in Singapore, at a university with corporations in Seoul at a graduate level think tank um, but also with corporations. Um, I find this fascinating and I also worked in theater and dance there. So um, again, let's keep structuring this binary between if this creeping intelligent, intelligence is entering our lives through screens um, through everything we do, through bureaucracy, through our cattle drive to our little lonely screens during COVID. I'm not saying it was wrong, but I'm saying we have to take it with a grain of salt, a critical grain of salt. And now we're supposed to reemerge um, and dig ditches once again. But who's digging the ditches? What was it? Um, the utopic aspect covered in that film where are, is a lot of work worth keeping. Um, uh, the manual stuff can is proven be dealt with other people. Elon, Elon Musk, I think, has 80% of his electric cars self-driving capable. Will we banish people from driving? Um, because it's unsafe. 40,000 people used to die a year on the highways. Um, is this potlatch? Is this creative destruction? Do we need sick to say, but not sick in the sense that every society has its sacrifices. Is it sick to say that in order to drive, we need gas at obscene levels, seven bucks a gallon, and we need people to die on the highway. Got on 95, 10 in the morning, going north to New Haven, and there's a trucker who was falling asleep at 10 in the morning, weaving through a huge semi. Human error, human UX, human to human UX, that often doesn't matter through these things. Um, I'm tired and upset by a lot of um, uh, GPS that puts you on these stupid highways that do not account for immediate um, accidents. You can use ways to tell you if cops come up or if, or if um, uh, you see an accident, but sometimes it's not fast enough. Most times I don't even want to be on the highway. I'd rather take the scenic route. Um, what, what generation are we? Like the Greeks being coerced into becoming um, slaves and soldiers and killing hoplites. Um, um, are, we, are we conditioned into thinking this is the normal? I don't think GPS is the normal. Um, and so forth. Let's go on. Editorial, all the questions, all the uh, the sort of open dialogues, branding, I, I hate this word, but Apple is branding their work around Dieter Rams, which is in this, this talk, um, uh, sort of inspections, and come out the other end as an embodiment. The AI doesn't need embodiment so far. 
um, unlike in that movie um, Ex Machina, um, she was chosen to embody qualities of being female. Um, uh, interesting concept with the kind of sexist male maker um, and onanistic, um, and then the little nerd coder boy who was given the opportunity to hang out with the big boss, and disaster follows. Great movie. Um, Oh, excuse me. Um, uh, this is again charge, charge, charge. Avant before. Um, oh, this is in French. Sorry, and after. Um, let's move on. I want to get deeper into sketching um, with you guys. There's thinking of a restaurant as UX UI. Thinking of architecture in interior architecture as UX UI. I've designed my place with bookcases for some reason. Like my brain, I love surfaces, and I love filling surfaces up with what I might just reach out and grab. If you haven't noticed my lecture style, I'll grab something from Braudel or, or um, Aristotle or, you know, as if it's sitting on a shelf. What is the UX UI of architecture? It is definitely embodied. We want to think of it as not. Um, these are um, chemicals, are just information put into inexpensive mediums. And most of the expense comes from the intellectual property of chemicals, medicines, and so forth, which take time and energy. But we think of Johanna Salk, who, um, very famous, who came up with the first polio vaccination and he has that famous, he gave away for free um, way back in the 40s, I think it was. Polio was devastating. Our president, Roosevelt, got it um, and was crippled the rest of his life. Um, Johannes Sock, when he got the important vaccination, and, and there is vigorous debates about vaccinations, um, uh, purposes, and so forth, but has this very um, ecumenical, very beneficent comedy said, when he said, I gave away for free, it was needed. Who can, who can tax the sun? That's his quote. Uh, and he became famous for it, opened up the Sock Institute at UCSD, beautiful uh, Louis Kahn designed campus there, which talk about interface. I love Louis Kahn for the purity, Pythagorean purity. Um, the British Museum in New Haven is, is one of the best East Coast examples of what he did. I'm not so sure about many buildings in New York by Louis Kahn, but the, um, he is based in Philadelphia. Chemicals. Um, is it thievery to take the chemical combinations that were into it? What aspect are chemicals and medicines like um, software and so forth? Um, just read the kind of good book, um, uh, Future Tech, was it? No, it was, um, uh, it was basically, I put it over here, um, I think the, the title, Lizzie O'Shea, a book on using, um, thinking about current technology and future in terms of the past. What was, what, did, what were the Luddites after? which is also covered in the movie. Why we see how we see as kind of a, 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 a branch swinging uh, primate, putting the eyes in front, unlike herbivores with kind of eyes on the side to watch for predators while they eat. Um, but irony is as an herbivore swinging in the branches to calibrate the depth, um, this is exactly like the predators, the, the feline and canine predators who are our main uh, competitors, our main um, sort of, uh, not just competitors, predators um, for tens and tens of thousands of years. How did this herb, uh, uh, arboreal ape hit the savannas, have this kind of a vision, binocular vision, um, we see 60, 60, 120 um, total, and there's top to bottom, that's a little more, 70. Um, but this is 
the fundamentals of UX and assuming that vision is it, man. There's a great book, um, The Cambrian, Cambrian Explosion, I read about the, the co-committant development between eyes, seeing, and armor. That exploded evolution, um, uh, rapid development of, of uh, fauna um, in uh, Cambrian era um, that was totally speeded up by both eyes and armor. You pre you, armor is predicated on the ability of eyes to seek and form and find. And you see this, I saw the other day on the beach, um, the um, horseshoe crab, which is anywhere from 200 million years old to 500 million, um, has the little uh, light sensitive eyes on the top of the shell. Um, um, this leads to one of my favorite things to do these isometric sketches, different permutations of idea. I totally geek out with this because I love just drawing squares and thinking, uh, you know, using one against the other to vary these things. And it, 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 creativity happens in often a parallel fashion. Fun, um, more uh, graphs. I'm always uh, uh, kind of validating my rather synthetic uh, way of, of disseminating knowledge. I think universities are still, the only way they're gonna climb out of monastery factory status is by reflecting the dynamics of the internet. That's, that's just what it is. And other ways they balloon into com complex systems that are born to fail. We see this with the mascot, Wolfie Sea Wolf. What's that all about? Um, uh, sports teams, um, I don't know what attended the American system, which is actually based on the German system, not the English, thank God, which is more meritocratic than class structured. Um, uh, but um, it implies invisible streams of capital, um, capital loss, potlatch. What do we do? You know, part of the monastery factory system is, you know, we just forklift you into your positions in the university warehouse and then you're supposed to get go through these trials and get out the other end and pooped out onto the street to earn a living that you have no idea. Meanwhile in the next four or five years as we said last lecture that radical change have not happened in generations but within 15 years um, uh, uh, sequencing of the genome um, a pervasive AI uh, self-driving, automation, all of this stuff, you're spit out on the street with all this stuff that's supposed to be good for you, um, saying now behave according to capital markets and you'll be fine. And the university taught you nothing about um, just survival, let alone articulating, keeping your humanity through neo-capital markets, neoliberal capitalist markets, and so forth. Um, this is not a diss of systems, this is just kind of noticing uh, failure structures, black swans within systems. I take and glean, I'll surround a word, which is UX, UI, and I'll come across things like this, which is the UX, UI of architecture. Beautiful to look at, must be beautiful to enter into a space. Um, because of this preponderance of vision, can we blame the Cambrian um, uh, explosion for this? Um, maybe. Um, eyes are important. Um, but we know plenty of blind people, and what we've done for blind people. Um, it's to enter into the space, to combine that with the olfactory, with the wood, the sense of touch. Um, what I want to impress upon all of you is that this is a joy to be placed between more or less synthetic and intuitive and embodied empathetic um, arts and humanities, at least we forget, they're infighting with each other now, and um, hard, rock hard, um, uh, materialist, positivist science that's ultimately attending to uh, capital accumulation. Between this is design. The world is beautiful. We make unnecessary stuff. And as Douglas Rushkoff said, do we need work as a validity to acquire that stuff? 
and so forth. Um, big questions, big questions. Uh, this is what I'm uh, looking for in your blog. Find the questions. If in a Socratic way you can come out from underneath existing in the academic warehouse, the university warehouse, and get off the forklift again and wander around these beautiful, they are beautiful. I, who doesn't like monasteries? You get to hang out with like-minded people. You get to talk about big ideas, but also useless things, um, or big because they are useless. Um, purposes, means, meaning, feelings, um, uh, fight against oblivion, fight against alienation. Then why are so many people alienated in the system? Well, they're stuck in a warehouse. Um, I love this interface, UX with light. Here's an architect that has worked out light as a, a spectacle in itself, just naturally. Is it low tech? Yeah, it's using the sun, um, the lowest tech there is. We're, everything's here because of the sun, um, but um, articulated through architecture into forms of light. Um, I love these isometric drawings because they get around to a clarity. I do a lot of them. Design process, again, working as artist, humanitarian designer at a huge STEM school, which is, um, let's be frank, only interested in um, teaching, researching in ways of greater capital accumulation. Um, um, so it's supposed to grow, but it doesn't. Um, I've seen plenty of bureaucratization in corporate America. It's becoming more bureaucratized. The, the culture of HR is uh, gone off the hook. Who's digging the ditches? Um, are we making useful things? When we're worried about how litigious society is, how things can go wrong, yet we cannot see black swans flying out of nowhere. Um, and changing everything. What, to, what degree is the UX of HR, its functions, actually functioning? What's useful? Who's digging the ditches? Why are we afraid to dig the ditches? Keep the trucks running. Keep humans in the trucks. Um, for a living, the last um, unskilled, un, uh, you know, working class skill where you can earn a decent uh, living is trucking. Um, now we're about to get rid of that, the way that the video stores and Blockbuster went away when we streamed video online. Um, all of this, um, inform, educate, persuade, advocate, entertain, big, touchy-feely words, linear, circular feedback, branching, natural. This is, all this crap is to describe a, common, a kind of a, a, an organic way of, of call and response if and then uh, if I do this, then the university might continue on a couple levels. It allows for this experimentation in a moral, well, you're paying for it, so is it a safe environment? Um, the ability to learn publicly, which I really sent when I was walking, I chose to lecture one day a week and walking across campus, I would encounter nobody. Um, a very lonely process. Um, part of the learning we do is social learning. So we are incentivized in learning around people from a narrow bandwidth who have narratives similar to us, creates um, a competition, healthy competition, desire, who's there, curiosity, um, tenacity. If they're doing it, I can surely do it. Um, all these good things. So one of the ways the university as not a factory monastery uh, might survive is the the public and the social aspect if we're all online um, uh, how do we incentivize each other um, more than the working out of the isometric in this is again architecture's interface look at that beautiful to me the way that stairs are communicating with the structure the way that this model shows transparency, this, this might be the interior of Rem Kuhaus's uh, OMA um, Seattle Library, Seattle Public Library, which is supposedly one of the new libraries that was going to deal with uh, the internet as a countervailing force to architecture and libraries. I've been in it, does it, will it, will it continue? I don't know, it seems a little archaic. Um, UX, end product, UI, they pose these as binaries, 
uh, critical creative and creative sy systematic user interface. How do we make this stuff? Interface design, design services, evaluation. Uh, I don't know. I feel like, um, uh, you know, I love all these graphs out there and I can talk endlessly about them, but they're, the map is not the territory. The territory is embodied. Um, it's a voyage. It's a travel, even online. Um, having the curiosity to find all this stuff. So, 10 steps to personas. Finding users, building hypotheses, verifications, finding patterns, constructing personas. Uh, kind of Dr. Frankenstein talk. Um, can you construct your audience? This is exactly what that movie, um, The Social Dilemma, was talking about. Validation and the buy-in. I hate these words like, oh, we're going to buy in. Uh, what is money? Money is interface. Uh, McLuhan very adeptly talks about, in his Aristotelian way, he uses the same Aristotelian um, uh, chart to talk about anything. Um, uh, to a 2,500 year old a square of opposition to talk about new media. Uh, uh, dissemination of knowledge, creating scenarios, uh, ongoing development. I hate that word buy-in. Um, uh, and then back to architecture, transparency, level, experience, embodiment, moving through. Then to something sinister, like what we employed overseas will soon be here amongst us. Um, tech, um, war tech, war tech unfortunately becomes police tech. Um, not, uh, I think there is a thin blue line between us and anarchy. There, um, it's a debatable. It's debatable, but it's you know living in New York and now here, I kind of want to continue that debate. On, it's a debate of scale rather than kind. Um, uh, profiling is the sinister aspect of AI applied to human beings, human beings of uh, certain races and genders, propensities, which is AI driven. So a lot of our arguments about who's promoting this, we have to get back to AI talking about that. Explore, generate, evaluate. That even making an iPhone we have this and now this is happening on a huge level of complexity there's that famous story of when Steve Jobs was st still alive uh, the the little worker bee came in with a um, one of the first iPhones I think it was iPhone 1 I think he died around iPhone 3 uh, I had an iPhone 1 that was supposed to write an article about and the battery lasted two hours and I said this is a piece of crap but anyway um, was I wrong no I don't know it's it's it got embodied it got innovated integrated essentially little worker B came into Steve Jobs in his office and he had some sort of fish tank there and uh, the worker B says we have busted our butts this is the thing is packed full of technology this is 250,000 times the power that the computer that sent the men to the moon in 69 would use. Um, this is an amazing uh, device, which it is. Um, and Steve Jobs took it and he said, we've gone as far as we can. We cannot reduce the size on the inside or the outside. And Steve Jobs took the phone and threw it in the fish tank and watched and a little bubble came up. And he said, get back to the, get back to the drawing board. It's not good enough. Um, uh, I guess he was that level a-hole that um, uh, really rode. I mean, he was a designer, let's face it. Um, that's all he was. Um, but a designer on a new level. Um, uh, architecture, I love models. Used to build them when I was young. Uh, visual function, visual mood, all these graphs to talk about how we arrive at these things to make people fetishistically buy these things. Yeah, I love certain, I love the little Bluetooth speakers. There's a culture of it. I hate it on the train, on the subway, where someone's playing their Bluetooth speaker with their crappy music and looking around, well, are you gonna defy me? Um, it creates another social psychology, these things, which is attendant to the UX, 
which a lot of design nerds don't get, that this thing is um, potent. Um, it implies a life beyond the thing. Dieter Rams um, is the genius of modernity and minimalism, even brutalism, that Steve Jobs worship. Um, number one, your item is innovative. We have that notion very strongly in the West, and after living in Asia for five years, I can say in various places that innovation, individuality is prided almost to the extent of this cowboy individuality, which ends up being meaningless. There is a, a power and a beauty and collectivity too, but Dieter Ram say it's innovative, makes the product useful, the item, is aesthetic, so one could say his boring little minimalist thing, is it aesthetic? Yeah, because where it's clean lines, it's also attention to surface. And you see that in the, this is a Samson S20. You see that in that, um, makes a product understandable, maybe, uh, throwing it in a fish tank might also, is unobtrusive, is this unobtrusive? They all look like now. So one could say, how is this innovative? They're basically like an old iPad or a Dieter Rahm shaver. Um, same design. Um, it is honest. Okay, I agree with that. These things are honest and honestly makes young children want to own a $1,200 iPhone for its potentiality. potentiality. It's long-lasting? Nope. Boo. This stuff is... Dieter Rahm's design in the early to mid 60s for brown, brown um, gadgets, let's just call it, shavers, radios, um, uh, hot water heaters, stuff like that, um, is, through, uh, is th thorough down to the last detail, throwing the iPhone into the fish tank prototype, saying, nope, get back to the drawing board or else you're fired. Um, environmentally friendly, not quite. Batteries are the new magic uh, dirty thing where they're supposed to disappear into the stratosphere. They don't, they, they leak acids. <clears throat> they are um, a search for materials that are um, uh, more rare than petroleum, um, leveraged much faster than petroleum. So are they really ecological? Um, as and what does it take? How much fresh water does it actually take to make a car? Um, that's why I drive a 25-year-old truck. Um, not the greatest gas mileage, but hell of a lot more ecological than a single Tesla. Um, if I can use it for 25 years, it's it's limping. Um, what's the thing? I think I remember these basic facts. There's something like it takes some horrendous number, 200 to 500 gallons of water to make one hamburger um, process, make the, have the cow, send it to market, blah, 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 down to one hamburger. Um, fresh water, water that needs to be filtered next time. Um, and it's a fantastic amount of water, fresh water needed to make a automobile um, from the process to the, the the uh, mining to the fresh water attends everything. Um, and the last one, 10, as little design as possible, which is why Steve Jobs loved Dieter Rams. Um, Krebs cycle, metaphysical, physical, well, I love all these things when people confuse the map for the territory. But it's fun. It's fun to talk about these. This is our old friend Aristotle here, the quadrants, the square of oppositions. Metaphysical, biological, digital, physical. Um, per perception, uh, uh, genes, atoms, perceptors, bits. Um, it's fun. It's fun to debate about these. It can help you design well. But ultimately, you have to get back. This is um, forecasting, which I do. I attend these futurist conventions and post-human conventions, all this other good stuff. Um, where, I mean, there's a, there's a, a, a kind of an energy and vitality here when academics start talking about the future and get away from um, uh, their little niche um, uh, uh, 
snowflake specialty and start talking about where this using their beautiful brains to talk about where are we all going even if they talk about medievalism and what how that's impacted you know i'm a big fan of gebser the ever ever present origin um so when we forecast we talk about the impossible the possible the plausible the probable and then we go into the infinity and my quick students will start seeing oh wow this is renaissance renaissance perspective um yeah it's positioning the one point in the future as possible plausible probable finding focal points shifting around you arrive at the vision you back up this has happened on scales steve Jobs certainly had this um as a dropout designer study type face hooked up with wozniak more of his guts guy um and then they had this idea um uh, in the 60s there were uh, no early it was an anecdote late 50s early 60s it was predicted MIT or or, or uh, one of the large uh, quasi academic military complexes <coughs> said there's no more need for computers beyond 7 and Steve Jobs took that heard that and said what if you give computers to everyone there is the ultimate ui ux what is the embodied brain behind the computer we often forget this chicken egg um, equation but here is <coughs> how futures could be imagined and then backed up certainly we're thinking of designer babies one of the paradigm shifts in our collective generation thinking about pervasive ai which is for forming us modeling us with machines, not even, and algorithms, not even other human beings on the other end. Um, uh, the bed, this was a lecture prepared for idea of, of medical tech, um, medical AI, um, virtual reality used in medicine, getting back to the savannah, what, what, is the, what are the optimal places to hold? We are, read all these books on the hominids. Um, uh, couple things happen well there's 2.3 times more efficiency when we stand upright instead of moving around on our fours on the savannah when the forests were drying up coming out of the trees finding sanctuary at night being afraid of of cats spiders snakes um snakes and spiders in the trees um cats on the ground um big cats big dogs um, but when we rose up, the birth canal was small. The brain developed this opening so it could get out. Um, uh, freed the hands up, so we hold the hands in front. This is part of Spengler's and Mumford's idea of technus and civilization. The, the hand now becomes uh, not just a tool, a tool to hold tools, um, but a, a realm of, of forward thinking and speculation. It's in front of us, it's on the savannah. Um, there's a development by a couple of Stony Brook professors on the coercion theory of society that because um, the person, savannah hominid, could throw things, um, that it took a society to overcome the renegades. Um, throwing stuff at each other from a distance. We're one of the few animals that can do that. Uh, frogs in their tongues and apes do this too, but not to the extent we do. Um, flying drones in over, you know, tanks in Ukraine um, takes that to an extreme. And we form a society around that, fortunately, unfortunately. Now let's get to the interface of the screen. Um, I know we're running out of time, um, but I deal with like this. I deal with um, uh, the Oculus, the wireless Oculus. Um, the Connect is something I used to use. The IR camera out there to, to also add interfaces. Somehow, uh, Macintosh has uh, took a nosedive for um, the ability to use this, but I'm going to get to a musical instrument, a Yiwu USB, to talk further about UI, UX, but here it is. Um, more beautiful graphs. I love the graphs in themselves. I used to, I still do love maps, and I know the map is not the territory. 
but um, I love the way that they spill out and talk about things. Um, discover, define, develop, deliver. This is basically graphs in order for very intuitive, embodied, intelligent individuals to talk to the bean counters. Uh, and hopefully a bean counter go, like, oh, okay, I get what you're doing. Um, uh, this, what we do is synthetic. We're looking at embodiment. We're looking at personal inclusion, yet not developing ad hominem arguments or solipsist referential arguments, but positing these things out in the world deliciously, sensually, embodied. Um, here's your embodiment of your cell phone, different power positions of expressed in values. Um, again, what is the interface when we look at the future? We're all interested in the future. So many people got punked with um, the um, new uh, collapse of the, inter of the stock markets. Like, why didn't they have enough of the prog prognostication out into the world? Um, more architecture. I think I just got throttled at 56 minutes. More side-by-side -side development of how information is coming to you. More scary things like who's going to be on our street. Um, uh, what's just like the prophetic film Robocop. What, um, who are these people? What are, what are they going to become? What are we going to become after they're on the streets using AI algorithms to find out whether we have a propensity to commit crimes, uh, profiled. Um, that's why the movie and Phil K. Dick in general is very wonderful as a futurist. The movie Minority Report was looking for a pre-crime. And then they went after the pre-crime uh, people who hadn't committed crimes looking like this. Um, more interfaces. Um, more tiny little pins and artifacts put on walls. Tiny little I don't know if this is garbage. This is it seems like fabrics. Um, UI, UX, and CX, which is corporate, which is kind of embodied in analog. But um, uh, UX is the 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 way into the machine, and UI the 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 interface is the how we mix with machines. Um, Again, this is Dieter Rahm's design thinking. Um, again, I have to show this again and again and again. I do this. I all might jump into the the orange zone and then go to the the brown zone and then you know I'll jump around this thing. Um, uh, back to architecture. Back to hierarchies. You can earn a big old living as a corporate manager doing brand strategy, and many plug-in positions are. You'll take over our social media. You'll take over our inter, uh, Instagram, uh, really realizing that this has a veracity. Again, back to drugs as similar to bits, but they transform the analog. Um, where is, who owns the intellectual property on this? We talk about what devastation um, op opioids have done to our society and how they've been both prescribed and illegal and overprescribed and part of our culture and um, introduced to our young people, including Adderall, antidepressants, and so forth, is designing your greater functionality but not having an idea where is the, the get off, where, is, where do we get off this pony? Um, and then people on it say, why get off? Um, uh, a culture has been created, a complex system, and as Talib said, um, um, makes a propensity, makes an entrance for the black swan to show up um, when complex systems are, are seen as strong when in fact they're both strong and fragile. Um, that is it for this lecture on UX UI. I'll continue next and then I'll get to the instrumentation. Uh, thank you.